Cool. So anyway, again, uh, my name is Ryan Jones. Uh, one of the application engineers here, uh, joined as well by Anthony Nicolaitis. Uh, if you, again, if you guys have any questions or if there's any technical difficulties, please just type into the chat window, uh, and Anthony will do his best to, to answer. Uh, so welcome again. Uh, we're here to talk about the uh, the Jazz series of PLCs that we offer. Uh, the Jazz unit is one of our um, introductory level PLCs. Uh, we try to keep the, the cost as low as we can while still giving um, our uh, a full rich uh, catalog of features. Uh, the Jazz still has uh, some onboard I.O. capable of digital, analog, uh, relay, and transistor outputs, as well as thermal couples, uh, depending on, on which Jazz unit you select. Uh, it can still do high-speed inputs or a high-speed counter. Uh, like all our uh, software, uh, you can download it for free. Uh, the Jazz is based off of our U90 software platform. Uh, that our M90 and M91 series of controllers uses. Uh, it, is, it came out be before uh, the Vision products, uh, so it is a bit different. Uh, we'll get into that more when we look at the software. Um, it, if you're used to programming on our Vision controllers, um, it's, it, you should be right at home. Things are just going to be a little different, but uh, overall pretty similar. Uh, we have 24K uh, of virtual ladder code memory. We're capable of using the, the GSM modem uh, as well as SMS, and we can still use some remote access uh, utilities, so we can uh, remotely access the, the data as well as the HMI screen remotely. The HMI itself uh, is a two-line 16 characters. Uh, we can have up to 60 uh, different screens. We also support multi-languages, as well as uh, graphics, uh, pretty simple graphics. We can display conditional me uh, messages similar to uh, a bitmap or an image by pointer. Um, we can have, a, for instance, if there's an alarm, uh, we can have the screen, uh, depending on which alarm is currently active, displayed on the screen. We can show time, date, uh, bit status, uh, status of any timers, integers. Um, any, any data that we have uh, in the controller, we can link to the HMI. Uh, and it also is a, a lit screen. Uh, like I said before, even though it, it is um, designed to be uh, our introductory model, it, it's still feature rich. Um, it has an uh, alphanumeric keypad on it that's customizable. Uh, you'll see there's little tabs um, that can slide in and out. Uh, depending on, on what you want the buttons to um, read, and then you could program in your ladder what they, uh, how they function. You can do a full source upload, uh, similar to a, a burn and upload project, um, so we can get the, the program from the controller at a later date. We're able to use high-speed counters. Uh, in the picture here, we see a, a flow meter. We can have time-based control. Depending on the value stored in the real-time clock, um, we can have different operations run and for, and for a certain amount of time. We can use the HMI uh, to scroll between pre-programmed recipes or menus. Um, we could have multiple uh, jobs or recipes on the same controller and basically just be able to switch in between the two um, right from the HMI. Like I said before, it is multilingual. Um, uh, the default is uh, English characters. Um, we can change it to a, uh, any other character-based uh, language as well. We offer the program cloner. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, basically, just allows us to um, clone one uh, jazz unit to another. And we can also uh, print from the jazz. There's a couple different jazz models. Uh, I recommend you, if you have a copy of our catalog, or to go to our website, uh, unitronics.com, uh, click on support and go to our technical library to see the most up-to-date uh, specs for all our models. Uh, the jazz, uh, although it has onboard I.O., it is not compatible with our uh, expansion options. Uh, for example, our uh, EX-A2X 
our local expansion adapter and I.O. modules are not compatible with the JAS. So just keep that in mind when you're selecting which one you need. You're probably going to want to um, get more I.O.s than you currently need, just so that if down the road uh, your project expands at all, uh, you'll be able to accommodate for that. The, the Jazz actually does not have a built-in um, serial port uh, like our, our other models. Um, this was done to kind of s slim down the package uh, to, as much as we could, uh, pass the savings on to you basically. Uh, so you have a couple options of how you can program it. The first is the basic programming kit. Uh, this module snaps right into the side of the Jazz unit um, and then connects uh, over serial uh, to a to your computer. Uh, we can download programs. Um, and it, the great thing about this is if you are, let's say we're programming 15 different jazz units, all the same program, we don't have to buy a programming kit for each one. We only need one programming kit uh, to program one at a time. If you want a full-fledged um, RS-232 or 485 port, say you're going to be using a, a barcode scanner or a printer or um, communicating over Modbus, um, we do have uh, an added module, um, the JZRS4, and you can also use that to program as well. And the, the third option is, is the program cloner module. Uh, it's the MJ20 uh, MEM1. Basically, um, if, you're, if you've done an SD clone, um, it's kind of the same principle. Basically, we, we can install the module uh, into a Jazz unit download the entire uh, the OS, data tables, uh, any operands, uh, download all that information into the, the cloner module, take the module out, plug it into a, a separate JAS, and download all that information into the new one. And the keypad slide kit as well. So today we're going to cover the, the basic U90 interface. Uh, I'm going to show you where to find um, uh, all the, the different buttons and features. Um, we're going to show how to update the OS on a Jazz, uh, as well as establish communication. Uh, we're going to show how to download a program. We're going to create a, several different HMI screens. Uh, we're going to link some variables to that HMI. And we're going to show you how to use the keypad entry, uh, so how to enter a, a variable from the um, front of the unit. We're going to use a what we call an SB function to linearize two values. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the U90 software. And we also are going to go through an SI function to fill a vector. So let's go ahead and open up the U90 software. So if you're familiar with VisiLogic, this should look uh, relatively similar. Um, you'll notice there's one screen for the ladder, and we have one screen for the displays. Uh, the first thing we're always going to want to do um, whenever we start a new project, we're going to want to confirm our communication settings, as well as check to see if the OS is up to date. So in U90, what we're going to do is we're going to go to controller. We're going to operating system. Select the right COM port. This COM port is assigned by your computer uh, to wherever the uh, programming module is plugged into. In my computer, it is COM1. And I'm going to set the communication speed to the default, which is 9600. Okay. Go ahead and hit check current OS. And it says my OS is up to date. Uh, if it was not, I would see over here in the operating system, this drop-down is going to have all the OS uh, files available that I could download. I could select which one I want, then I could hit Start to download. Since we're all up to date, we're just going to close that. Okay, so I know my, my controller is up to date, um, and I know my communication is okay. So let's go ahead and start a new program. So click New. We're going to be using a Jazz controller, and I have a JZ10-11-R10. You'll see here, um, I can define any of the, the inputs, 
outputs and it has uh, two high speed inputs. We're actually not going to be using any inputs today, so I'm going to leave them all blank and go ahead and hit OK. And that's it. We're ready to start programming. I want to go over through just a few more of the U90 uh, features. Uh, you'll see over here on the left, this is our navigation pane. Um, starting with the properties, um, we can set up the author manager. Um, we can set up um, some comments, perhaps keep a history log of any changes. Uh, we can also see the uh, statistics. This is a great tool, uh, especially for larger programs where you might be uh, reaching the maximum size for memory allocation in terms of uh, the program or, or the HMI displays. Uh, this is a great little indicator of how much we've used so far. Next up we have the, the program. Quick jump to the, to the ladder. Uh, the power up, if I have assigned any power up values to any of my operands, um, meaning that as soon as the controller uh, powers on, it's going to assign those values, they will be listed here. Since it's a blank program so far, uh, there's not much to look at. Uh, bookmarks, it's a great feature for if you have a, especially for a longer program. Basically all it does is no matter where you are, um, what net or what rum you're on, you can create a bookmark. And anytime you select that bookmark, it's going to jump right back to where you were. Again, this is going to be a relatively simple program today, um, so I'm probably not going to create any bookmarks. So I'm just going to minimize that to keep it out of the way. Next up is our HMI, all our current displays, as well as the variables. Here's a typical blank display. I'll get that into just one second. Next up is data type. Types. If I want to see uh, the status or the labeling or, or value of any of um, my inputs, outputs, memory bits, etc., um, this is the window to go to. Basically, this comes up in list form here. Uh, if we were in online test mode, we'd be able to see what the current value in the controller is. Next, we have watches. Watches uh, are a great way to, uh, to track um, a certain process uh, inside the program. For instance, if I um, was doing a, a math function uh, and I just wanted to see the status of all the operands involved in that one function, I could just add them here as a short little list to see them uh, grouped together uh, in one spot. And then lastly, we just have our tools. Uh, hardware configuration we just saw, um, and then the rest, uh, we have modem services, uh, SMS configuration. We don't have to worry about that right just, just yet. Uh, it's a little more advanced stuff. Um, uh, operating system, if you want to run a PID loop or set up a drum, these are just quick links to get us to the, uh, the right page. So let's go ahead and set up our first HMI. First thing we're going to do is just label it. I'm going to call it main page. And the first thing I'm going to want to add here, real simple, we're going to add a clock in the upper right here in corner here. Uh, first I'm going to label it. You'll notice I can just click um, anywhere on the screen I want to uh, start typing, and I can just start typing. I'm going to write in time. Now to set a variable, uh, the first thing we have to do is actually create it. So you'll see up here, add new variable. I'm going to call this uh, current time. And I'm going to select the date and time option. It's going to ask me which format I want to use. I'm actually going to stick with the hour minute format. And I'm going to go back to my display. So you'll see here is the variable I just created, date and time. I can now select a place to put it. I'm just holding down the left mouse button here. Uh, now since I selected uh, hours and minutes, so that's two characters for the hour, two characters for the 
minutes and one character for the colon. So I'm actually going to have to map out five character spaces total. So I'm just going to count from right to left. One, two, three, four, five. And I can click attach variable. You'll see here, um, we listed as VR. I can just hit the drop down, hit current time, and hit OK. You'll see it kind of appears as these hash marks. Um, they're going to go in order uh, by color. So the first one's going to be red, the next one's going to be green, the third one's going to be blue, etc. And the one here uh, relates to the, the variable list over here. Uh, not that because it's red, it's because uh, it's variable number one. So let's actually just go ahead and download that real quick. Uh, to download, just this button here. Uh, you'll see there's a, a couple options here, but they're all grayed out. Uh, that's because that's actually an M90 feature. Uh, with the M90, we can select if we want to download the ladder, the displays, variables, etc. Uh, that's actually not available in the Jazz. Uh, it just downloads it as one big chunk. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. There's our status window. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and see what the uh, uh, time format looks like. So if I go up here to debug, this is what we refer to, commonly refer to as online mode. We see this uh, basically virtual representation of the, the jazz unit on my desk here. Um, if we had a keypad entry, um, we could use these buttons, as you see, uh, just like if I was pressing on the unit itself. But there we see uh, time just as I read it, wrote in it, and the, the time over here. Close that for now. Get off online mode. All right, next we're going to show how to do a, um, a bitmap uh, or, or a bit. So we're going to say um, we're going to have uh, a variable on the screen, uh, and when we press the, the zero key, uh, we're going to cycle between uh, two displays or two elements. So let's say press zero, two. Now I'm going to have this say start and stop, and it's going to cycle in between the two. So the first thing we need to do again is create that variable. This is going to be called start stop. It's a bit value. So when it's zero, it's going to say stop. And when it's 1, it's going to say start. If I just wanted to show the value of the bit, all I would have to do is just put in a 0 for the 0 and a 1 for 1. If you just leave it blank, uh, it will not show 0 and 1. You have to uh, enter them in yourself. Let's stick with stop and start. Uh, and the ne next thing we need to do is we need to link it to a bit. So we just hit this link to button. You'll see it uh, goes to the first one available, MB0. I'm going to give it a, uh, a title. I'm going to call it the, a run bit. Now, you should notice that uh, MB0 has a label, run bit, and the variable has a separate label, uh, start stop. Uh, start stop is not linked to MB0. Um, MB0 for a description, MB0 has a description run bit. Uh, reason being is we can have multiple variables linked to the same um, bit uh, or integer uh, and display them in different ways. So, for instance, uh, if we're sticking with this MB, um, I could have one variable that says stop start and I could have another variable that says something else. So I'm going to go back to my HMI just like we did before. Attach variable, 
and we see it in the drop down. Again, here's our, our list. Shows us that the, the green one is my start stop bit. Okay, but now we need a way to toggle in between uh, start and stop. As is, uh, we don't really have a way to change that bit. So I'm going to go into the latter portion now. Um, you can click on it over here. Or if you like, you can use the link up here as well. All right, we're going to run this bit off of uh, the zero key on the, on the keypad. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a uh, positive transition contact. All our, our contacts are under here. I'm going to link it to a system bit. And I'm going to just use the drop down to figure out which one is button zero. So I'm just going to scroll down. And it's SB40, key zero. So when I press uh, key zero on the keypad for one scan, uh, this uh, variable is going to be high. Now I want this to be able to toggle back and forth. Uh, if I just wanted it to change it to uh, one, you know, turn it to, to start, I could just put a set here. But I want a way of having it toggle back and forth. So I'm going to create a, a basic uh, toggle element here. Uh, it's rather simple. Uh, basically, uh, I'm going to say, have an inverted contact here, an MB0, basically saying if MB0 is not on, set it. In parallel to that statement, I'm going to say if it is on, reset it. So again, uh, press the, the zero key on the keypad. Uh, this is going to go high for one scan. It's going to check and see if MB0 is running. If it, if it is not, uh, it's going to turn it on. If it is, it's going to turn it off. Let's go ahead and download that. So here, here we see right now uh, the state of uh, MB0 is currently uh, 0. So it says press 0 to stop. I press 0, and it changes to start. Press it again, goes back to stop. Uh, if you see here uh, as well, uh, if we follow the, the ladder, uh, we can see uh, what's being energized. So when I first hit um, the SB0 key, this lights up see that uh, MB0 is high and reset the bit. Toggle it again, and now we see that it's low, and it's set the bit. Now, if we go back to our, our HMI screen, we can see we've kind of filled up all the space. Um, it's, not a, it's not a whole lot of room to play with, so we're going to have to make a new screen. So let's click Add New Display here. Uh, in this one, we're going to enter the value of two MIs. So I'm just going to call it uh, Keypad Entry. But now we need some way to get to this screen. So real quick, I'm going to go back to my main page. You'll see down here we have the jump conditions. I'm going to create a jump condition. Again, I'm using a system bit because I want to link it to the arrow key. Whenever I press the right arrow key, I want to jump to keypad entry. 
And similarly, when, once I'm on keypad, I need a way to get back. So I'm going to just do the same. Set a system bit. To the left arrow key. And that's going to back to my main page. Okay, so like I said, on this screen, we're going to enter two MIs. So this is going to be MI0. This is going to be MI1. So we need to create the variables. Go to integer. And you'll notice, uh, depending on which uh, variable type you select, the, the, the screen here is going to change. Uh, so for bit, um, we had the, the text for off and on. Uh, for integer, uh, it's going to ask us the, the format. I'm linking it to MI0. Um, the format here, these X's is the, the decimal notation. So for instance, uh, xxx.x would be three uh, whole numbers and then one decimal point. Uh, for the first one, we're just going to do one decimal. Uh, leading zeros, uh, if we define uh, the, the MI to take up, let's say, five characters on the HMI, if we uh, select the leading zeros option, even if that MI is only one character, it's going to fill the other four empty uh, spaces with zero. Uh, this is going to be a keypad entry, so I just have to check this box. If I want to be able to limit the user to only be able to enter a certain range, I can click Enable Limit, and then give them a minimum maximum value. But for now, we're just going to have a, any, any. I'm going to label my variable, MI0, no decimal. And while we're at it, we're just going to go ahead and create the, the MI1 as well. And this one actually is going to have a decimal. We're going to do the 3-2 the notation. So three whole numbers, two decimal points. It's also going to be a keypad entry. Label my variable. Now we can go ahead and put them on the screen. Oops. Wrong button. Attach variable. Select it from the drop down. And let's go ahead and download. Okay. So here's the, the first screen that we have. It's going to press the, the right arrow. Uh, now on the online mode here, we see this the tilde character. Uh, on the actual PLC itself, it's a blinking uh, underscore cursor, basically highlighting um, an area that is requesting a keypad entry. Uh, so I can go ahead and enter a value here. Just put in one, two, three, four, five and then hit enter. Uh, you see, it, it, as soon as we finish the first one, it's asking us for the second one. So I'm going to put in five, six, two, three. Oops. Now, you'll notice uh, 
MI0 and MI1 actually both have the same value right now uh, as stored in the controller. Uh, they're both 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, the difference being is MI0 is being displayed as a whole number and MI1 is being displayed as a decimal. Uh, but in terms of the actual variable, I'll show you if we go to uh, our MI values here, they both have the, the same value. It's just how we're showing it on the screen. Uh, the Jazz unit actually does, is not capable of using memory floats. Uh, for, for most cases, that's fine. Um, we just deal with uh, whole number values, um, basically multiplying by uh, you know, some magnitude of 10. Uh, and then when we need to display it on the screen, for whatever reason, we can uh, just put the decimal point in uh, on the HMI. So you see the, the cursor has stopped blinking because I've entered both variables. If I leave the screen, and go back. It's going to ask me to enter the variable again. Now with only two screens, that's okay. I can just I can just hit the enter button, uh, and it will just store or, or use uh, the value that was already there instead of uh, taking a new value. Uh, two screens, that's okay. But if we had a, a, a larger program, uh, the whole bunch of screens, and we're just trying to uh, get to the one we want, we don't want to have to keep uh, entering all these variables in each time. So there's, there's a way, uh, way around that. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to close this. We're going to go to our ladder real quick. Add a, should have had a comment here. This is just toggle uh, MB0 or binary text. And now we're going to prevent uh, keypad entry on new screen. Screen 2. So what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we've uh, landed on screen 2. So I'm going to use a compare statement equal. Uh, the, the current HMI being displayed is stored in an SI, SI2. And I'm going to compare that to a constant of 2. So whenever the current screen uh, changes to 2, I'm going to activate a bit. is MB1, and I'm going to call it screen to displayed. So now whenever I enter that screen 2 that has the, the MI0 and MI1 keep that entry, I have a bit that's going to go high. What I want to happen is I want that bit to trigger uh, a system bit that we have SB39 uh, which is forced HMI entries complete. Uh, so instead of requesting the user to, to enter the, val the values, uh, it's just going to keep whatever values are already there uh, and it's going to stop uh, the keypad entry. So again, uh, as soon as I come to that screen, I'm setting a bit or I'm sorry, we're, we're activating a bit. Uh, when we first see that bit come on, i.e. when we first come to screen 2, we're going to disable keypad entry. Now that works great uh, when we're cycling through pages to find the page we want, um, but then we don't have any way of actually entering the data. So we, we need a way to uh, disable that. Now we're going to enable keypad entry. So again, by default, it's, a, it's going to enable keypad entry as soon as you go to a screen that has any keypad uh, entry variable in it. Uh, we only do this because we disabled it. Re-enabling it's uh, relatively simple. 
I'm going to link it to the enter button. Uh, so whenever I press the enter key, I want to be able to enter a new variable. Again, that's a system bit. What we're going to do is we're going to store the uh, the number of the current HMI display uh, into the uh, SI2. I'll explain that in a second. So we store SI2 into SI2. Basically, what that's doing is it's refreshing the screen. Uh, we're calling the same screen we're already on uh, again. Uh, once we, we do that, it's going to ask us to put in the new variables. Uh, but since our, our compare statement uh, is, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the bit is only looking for uh, a change, um, since we're not changing pages, we're, we're just refreshing it, uh, we're not going to set system bit 39. You're right. All right, so let's go ahead and download that and see how it looks. Okay, so here's our, our first screen. Now I notice uh, you go over here to screen two, and you don't see the tilde here. Um, and on my screen, uh, it's not asking me to uh, enter a variable. If I wanted to change the, the state of MI0 or MI1, all I have to do is press the Enter button, refreshes the HMI, and allows me to enter in the variables. Any questions so far? Yes. So SB39, uh, again, is one of the system bits that we have. Um, if we ever set that uh, system bit, it's going to force the controller um, to complete all keypad entries. So no matter if we finish entering uh, all the keypad variables on the screen or not, uh, it's going to set them um, anyway, it's not going to change the values of any of them. Uh, it's just not going to prompt us to, to enter a new value. Uh, again, the main feature of that is um, we can quickly navigate uh, between screens without having to uh, scroll through uh, every piece of data on each new screen. Uh, anytime we go to a screen that has a keypad entry, uh, the, the Jazz unit is always going to uh, ask us to enter a value. Uh, even if, if we've already entered a value before and we just are browsing through, I don't want it to keep entering at each time. And again, the, the way we disabled that is just refreshing the screen. All right, now you know that if you're if you're you familiar with uh, VisiLogic uh, or other um, uh, ladder programs, you notice uh, the main difference uh, with the 90s. We don't have the the function blocks, um, at least not as many as you'll you'll see in VisiLogic. Uh, we still have a lot of the same features uh, and capabilities of the things that you would normally see in a function block. Um, we just have to kind of go about them a different way. Uh, for example, we're going to do a linearization. Let's go ahead and, and start a new screen here. Uh, linearization, basically we're, we're going to um, take an input 
uh, and we're going to uh, find its value um, on a certain range. Uh, so for instance, if we have an analog input uh, or reading a bit value, we need to convert that bit value into you know, a real engineering unit. So let's say um, uh, 0 020 milliamps or, or 0 010 volts. Uh, we need some way to uh, scale it. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is, is add a variable for that bit value. Attach the variable. And there's our bit value. And I'm going to show the result of once we scale that bit value to a, a real engineering value. I'm going to show it in 0 to 20. And the way we're going to do that is in the ladder. Uh, it's actually a good uh, point to point out uh, the help file as well as the sample projects that, that come with the U90. The sample projects is great uh, if you uh, are trying a new um, feature or, or programming. Um, if you want to see an example uh, of how it's done, um, we have uh, a couple folders of different projects you can take a look at, uh, as well as a really good help file. We're going to be doing a linearization. So like, like I said before, um, we're going to set up a, a scale, basically our, our bit value. Um, the lowest bit to the highest bit, and the lowest real value to the largest real value. So we can take any uh, value in between and see what that comes up to in real units. To do this in the latter, we're going to be using one of our system bit functions. Um, just want to show you. I just want to show you the help file so you know how to get to it. Um, I'm sure you, most of you probably can't read um, within this resolution, but this is where you would find it. Basically what it does uh, is we're going to use the store command We're going to use the store command to enter the, the values we want to use for this linearization. Uh, because it's a system uh, bit uh, function You'll actually see they are uh, labeled here. Uh, I believe it begins at SI80. Oops. Sorry. One second. There we go. So you see here, starting at SI80, um, we're looking for the, the uh, X1 value, the X2 value, uh, Y1 value, Y2 value, as well as our input in the result. Just like if we were setting up a function block, we would set up all our inputs and then define our output. Um, with the, the system bit functions, uh, they're predefined um, in system integers. So the first thing I did uh, is I stored zero because we're going to be using a 12-bit um, a scale, which goes from zero to 4,095. So the low end on the bit on the bit side is zero. I will put in the high end of 4,095. And now we're going to go into SI81. Uh, they're all labeled, make them easy to find. Um, if you need to, uh, if you know the the name, 
you don't know the number, you can always type it in the box here. Okay, so now we have the X range, 0 to 495. We're going to define the Y. Again, it's going to be from 0. Uh, and we're converting it to a 0 to 20. Okay, so in this rung we've set up the, the parameters for the function. Now we need to run it. So the first thing we do is we're going to put in the, the final input which is our MI value, MI2. We're going to store that into the SI84, the input. And then we're going to set the bit. Setting the bit is basically telling the function to run. So again, in, in net here, uh, 5 here, we set up the parameters for the function. We've set the, the x values, 0 to 4095 uh, bit scale. We're converting it to um, 0 to 20. We've defined our input as MI2, which we're getting from the HMI, keypad entry. And then we're activating the function. After that function runs, the output also needs to be saved. So we're going to grab the output from SI85, the result. I'm going to store it in a new MI. We're going to call it 0 to 20 result. Reason being, if we wanted to use this linearization function again, uh, that value would be overwritten. So we're going to save it in a different spot so we can show it on the screen and still use the linearization function. Uh, now we just got to put the 0, 020 here on the screen, add a new variable. And lastly, just a way to get back to the screen. Yeah, one second. Uh, Anthony actually brings up a good point. Um, normally, uh, in normal uh, ladder logic, if, if we're just uh, on the main rung here, if we store a value and immediately set a bit, uh, that bit is always going to be set. We're really not going to have any way of deactivating. Uh, for example, if we just put a set coil uh, right here on the, on the rail, it's always going to be activated. There's going to be no way to reset it. Uh, however, since it's a system bit, uh, it doesn't follow the same uh, rules or um, functions as a normal bit. Uh, if, if we store in a value and we set the bit, it's going to run the function once, reset itself, 
uh, you know, storing the value in test site 85, and it's going to wait for a new value. Uh, if I enter a new value here, it's going to reset the uh, or reactivate the bit, and again re uh, deactivate itself when, it, when it's done. Uh, when you are dealing with the, the system bits or system integers uh, in the help file, it'll clearly define uh, kind of how they function. Um, just be sure to, to read it ahead of time. So let's go ahead and download. See what I did. Uh, note here, um, although we're doing linearization in the logic, we can also do it on the display. Uh, basically, we can, we can have the, the value you want to linearize. You can set up the scale here uh, and display it on the screen. Uh, the reason why we're doing it in the logic, uh, if, you're, if you're doing it on the display, uh, the resulting value isn't stored anywhere. So, for instance, if we needed to convert to a 0 to 20 um, uh, milliamp signal and then use that in some calculation, we don't have any way of actually addressing the results. Uh, the display is only just shown on the screen. Okay, so you'll see here, if we enter four, zero, nine, five, gives us 20 milliamps. If we put in about half that value, It gives us 10. Now let's say we also want to know what it is on a 0 to 10. Okay, so now I want to see what it looks like on a 0 to 20 milliamp. I also want to see what that value would be if uh, we had it configured at a 0 to 10 volt. So in the latter, I'm actually going to use the exact same SIs that we used before. I'm just going to store different values into them. In fact, I'm actually just going to grab this whole run. Actually, these three runs. I'm going to hit Control-C on my keyboard to copy them. Press Control V to paste and paste them right there. And label them so we can tell them apart. So here's our 20 milliamp linearization. This is going to be our 0 to 10. Now we're using the same uh, bit value. So we don't have to change the X1 and the X2, so I'm going to leave those as is. The bottom scale is the same, so SIA2 I'm also going to leave as is, but I'm going to change the upper value of Y2 to 10. We're still converting the same bit value, so that doesn't change, except we're going to store the result now into MI4. Now, we're using the same function, uh, but since uh, ladder always goes from top to bottom, 
It's going to store in these values for the function. Puts in the input, runs the, fun run runs the function once, and saves the value. Before running it again, it changes the uh, parameters and then runs it. If we had um, the, the activate run before we change the parameters, we wouldn't get the right result. I'm just going to go ahead and download that real quick. So you'll see here, um, again, it's taking the same bit value, uh, 2040. On a 0 to 20 scale, it's about half value, which is 10. Or on a 0 to 10 scale, it's half, which is about 5. Uh, you've taken the same bit using two different, um, well, the same um, linearization function, but with two different sets of parameters. So that's a, a basic system bit function. Uh, it's also what we call system integer functions. Uh, they function a little bit differently. Um, the best way to uh, see what we have available uh, and how to use them is to go to the help file, search in keyword special functions, and you'll get a complete list of um, all the ones we have available. Uh, we can do A times B divided by C. We can change the, uh, the COM port parameters. Um, we have a couple Modbus utilities, uh, et cetera. Uh, just search the, look, take a look in the help file, uh, see if what you're trying to do is there. Uh, for each one, uh, you'll see these links in blue. Uh, we'll give you a more detailed uh, setup of how they work. Uh, the, the setup for most of them uh, is certainly the same. Basically, what's going to happen um, is SI uh, 141, 142, 143, et cetera, uh, is going to be all our, our inputs uh, and, and output, actually. We're defining where our output's going to be. Uh, and then we're going to store the function uh, we want to use into SI 40. So for instance, um, A times B divided by C is 100. So after we set up our parameters, as soon as we store 100, into SI140, it's going to run the A times B uh, divided by C function. Uh, if we wanted to use a different function, uh, our input still goes into the same place, SI141 uh, to SI146. Uh, I believe that's the highest it goes. Uh, only thing we change is the, the value we store into SI140. Uh, and again, to see uh, what the inputs uh, or how they are uh, set up, just be sure to look at the help file. Uh, for our example, we're going to do the, the fill vector. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, define uh, a vector in our logic um, that we we're going to fill it with the same value. So we're going to take uh, 10 MIs, let's say. We're going to fill them all this with one value. So the first thing I need to do, just like we did with the uh, linearization example, we need to store in our parameters. Oops. First one is going to be SI141. So notice it just says function operand because uh, it, it all depends on what we store into SI140. Uh, in terms of the uh, fill vector scenario, this is the MI that I want to start filling at. Again, all this information is in the, the help file. Oh, 
where is it? So we'll see here, SI141 determines the start of the, the target vector. SI142 is going to determine the length. SI143 is going to select the fill value. And then when we store um, 100 into SI40 is when it's going to run the function. So let's just finish setting up our parameters here. I'm going to start at MI20. I'm going to fill 10 MIs. Uh, I'm going to store a variable value here. I'm just going to call it store A. So again, I'm storing in uh, where I want to start, in my 20, how long, 10, and a value. I'm actually going to give this a power-up value, uh, let's say 6. So now we have the parameters, we need to set it to run. And we're going to do that by storing a value into SI140. Taking a quick look at the help file, determine which one we need. So again, this is fill vector. If I want to fill an MI vector, I'm going to store 30 into SI140. If I was doing an MB vector or a database vector, uh, it would be 36 or 31. But we're just going to do an MI vector, so we need the number 30. So I just go back down to my ladder. Store direct. Constant 30. Into SI140. So setting up my parameters and then which function to, to run those parameters with. So I can go ahead and download this to the controller and we boot it back up. We should see MI20 through MI30 all have the value of 6. I'm going to check quickly just by going to our data types, memory managers, and go into online mode. And there we see MI20 through MI30 has got the value of 6. If I go and I change um, MI5 here, the value we're, we're copying, say maybe 5. Go back to our MIs. See now a hall has five. Uh, you can use the uh, as many special functions as you want. Um, just keep in mind, you know, uh, to before you run the function to change the parameters uh, to what you need, and then run the function. I also have this running uh, right on the rail, so it's running every time. Uh, if I was doing multiple uh, SI140 functions, I would want to have this in some kind of condition uh, so I could uh, have a way of delegating uh, when to run which uh, SI140 function. Uh, since I only have one, this works fine. Does anybody have any questions? So that was a pretty good overview of, uh, of the Jazz uh, and the, the U90 programming. Um, we, 
if you are interested in uh, any other programming concepts, I do recommend checking out some of the other webinars we have uh, on Visualogic. Uh, although the, the programming software is different, uh, and things are going to be done a little bit differently, the general concepts are the same. Uh, for instance, uh, if you look at our timers webinar, uh, the way the, the coils and the contacts uh, interact with each other is, is almost identical. Um, it's just how you place them on the rail and slight little differences uh, are going to be different. Um, uh, as well as always make sure to check out the help file uh, and the examples folder. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact us at uh, support at unitronics.com uh, on our website as well, www.unitronics.com. Uh, if you have any ideas for any future webinars um, or, or, or topics you want discussed, uh, feel free to drop us a line. Uh, other than that, thank you all for attending and I hope you have a great day.